okay, I get it. You've been studying, you've been reading books, you've been watching YouTube videos, you've been following the gurus and all that, and they've been telling you to sit and meditate, and you've been doing all these things, and then something happens, and you just lose it. You make things worse, and you shout, or you just don't feel that inner peace that they're all promising you, and they all say it's so easy. I get it. But in this video, I'm gonna explain why it's so difficult, and a few things you can do to just to adjust. I'm Stephen Webb and about, I don't know, six, seven years ago, I hit my rock bottom. And coming out of that, I started to study why I was suffering so much. I was reading books, I was following gurus, I was signing up to courses and I was doing all these things. And I joined a Sangha and I joined um, different meditating groups, things like that, because I wanted a little more inner peace. Really, I wanted to suffer less. That's more what I wanted wasn't so much the inner peace. I was just fed up with suffering, to be quite honest. And I remember after about three years, I was being more zen, I was being more stoic, and I was always, you know, I've got this now, I can do this. And my daughter came in and she said something to me, and I just lost it. I was like, you won't believe it. And I just went off on one. And after about two minutes, she stood there and she took it. And then she looked up and I said, I'm finished now. And she goes... Well, that's very zen of you, isn't it? And it made me laugh because we both laughed together at that point. I can't remember, did we laugh at that point? It was a bit later in the day. But we laughed later anyway. I think she walked off at that point. But it was real that holding that mirror up that I was doing all this work and I was telling everyone how to be more at peace and how to suffer less. And yet there I was. I wasn't totally living it and totally been at peace myself and I think that's that's to be realistic we have all these promises of everlasting inner peace and stillness and all this wonderful open your heart and the world will love you and you give and you'll get back tenfold and we get all these promises and we have all these feel good feelings we pick up a book and we read the introduction in the first couple of chapters and straight away we're feeling good I've got this I understand this and then a few days later, a few weeks later, we're back to square one again. Or even if we don't get right back, we're back to um, perhaps shouting or being annoyed or crying or suffering again. Yet we now know differently. Why is that the case? Well, it's the case because most of your life you go through a habitable response. And let me just briefly explain the three parts of your brain. You've got the instinctual first part of the brain, the reptilian part, the animal instinctual, um, staying alive part of your brain. That's the first, that's the base stem of your brain. And that's where all information gets passed through. And that decides whether or not you're in immediate danger or threat. And it, that, that's the kind of thing, if you take out the hot buns out of the oven and you drop it, that's your reptilian brain saying, drop it. It doesn't say, oh, place on the side, that tray, it's going to damage the floor or work out some kind of best way of doing it. It's just going to say, drop it. Or when someone makes you jump, you turn around straight away and you're like, ah. Oh. Basically, it doesn't involve you in the decision making. It just jumps ahead and does it. Then we have the subconscious mind. That develops second. Most animals have it. Most all humans have it. We, it. It's like your storehouse. And as you're a child, you don't have much in this storehouse. You have the reptilian, you have the survival needs. You know, you need, you need comfort and food and things like that and security. But everything else in your storehouse, the subconscious mind, is built up with really your ego. So over, from about seven or eight months and most of your life, and especially as, as younger... You open this brain and all the information comes in. And you learn from how your parents react. You learn from how you experience life. Um, people in your your peers, your teachers. Um, I can't, my neighbours are doing some work next door. I hope you, hopefully you can still hear me. Okay. Um, but you got everybody around you teaches you and fills this 
open mind with how you should experience life. So if you've got a parent that always flies off the handle at the slightest thing, you'll either learn to fly off the handle or you'll learn to be quiet. We, are, we either have an addiction to the way people do things and we copy them, or we have an allergy and we do the opposite. It's very often if you've got like parents that drink a lot or smoke or read a lot, you'll either read a lot with them or smoke with them when you're older, or you'll have an allergy and you'll be like, I don't read anything or I'm totally against smoking. So this is what your subconscious mind is doing. It's collecting all the information and it's there ready to process when the instinctual mind doesn't know what to do or is not interested or you're not a threat. So every action or every time something happens, it goes to your instinctual mind. You're not going to die in this moment. You don't have to react quickly. Pass it over to the subconscious mind. Subconscious mind looks through the filing cabinet. What did you do last time? How did you respond or react last time? How did people that are around you over the years? And the, the thing that has the most weight is the thing you normally do in those situations. Like if you're a smoker and you get in the car and you normally have a cigarette, you'll get in the car, sit back, and light up a fact, and you don't even know you're doing it. Um, same with many other things that we don't even, know, don't even realize we do like brushing our teeth in the morning, we'll do it a certain way every single time. It's your subconscious mind creating, doing those habits. So when we embark on this spiritual journey in quotes or this wanting to suffer less and wanting to have more inner peace, whatever your reason for doing it, you're, you have to override the neuro patterns in your subconscious mind. So you've now got the human mind, the third part of the brain. That, when your subconscious mind gets asked a question, or if I ask you the question, what's the capital of America? You'll reply quite easily, Washington. Or capital of um, England, like London. But if I ask you the capital of uh, Kazakhstan, the subconscious mind goes, mm, no, I haven't got that, over to you. And then the human brain is asked and the human brain will um, perhaps go back to the subconscious mind where, well, you need to look it up. Let's go to Google or something like that. So the subconscious mind will pass over anything that it hasn't experienced in the past. So anything new in new situations, it's quite easy to change. But the subconscious mind doesn't even make you aware if it's already got the answer. It doesn't say to you, um, when you ask, what's the capital of England or what's two plus two? It doesn't say, well, I think the answer is two, but I'm going to pass it over to you just in case. So when someone comes in and attacks you or someone comes in and says something like Kemba did that day to me, my subconscious mind doesn't go, well, I'm going to react in this way because it worked the last 10 times, or didn't, it doesn't matter as long as you survived it. The as long as you survived, the subconscious mind thinks it's okay. It worked. Like cigarettes. Didn't kill me. I felt good. Fine. You know, and I pick on cigarettes because it's, it's a habit that we all know is bad, but we all know we continue to do, so you can understand it. So, and I used to smoke. I gave up smoking twice. And I used to say I could give... It, I could give up smoking any time. I've done it loads. But twice, really, I gave it up. And it's not easy. But it's crazy. How come it's not easy to give up a habit that's clearly terrible for us? Doesn't make no sense, right? But this is exactly the same as the spiritual journey, the inner peace, the suffering less. You're trying to give up a habit that you've formed over these years. And everything is all new, well and good to the subconscious mind. It loves learning something new. But it doesn't like overriding old habits. And think of your brain in this way. When you're young, when you're very young as a child, and you're forming the ego for the first time, you've got nice fields that are quite clear. And then someone brings in a thought or an opinion or something you may like or dislike. And that's like, put in a tent and then when someone else comes in and enhances that 
opinion or belief or the response or the way you deal with something. You then build another few tents and then you build a little village. And then eventually by the time you're a teenager, you've got these whole cities of opinions and beliefs and ways and experiences of life. So therefore you've formed your habitable responses, your habitable reactions. And that's like a neuro pattern in your brain. It's like, um, so if something happens, something arises, it immediately looks to the brain for what happened last time in the subconscious mind, and it rewires that pattern, just like driving somewhere. It's, you know, if, you're, if you drive the same road to and fro work every single day, and then on Saturday you, you drive half that journey, but you need to turn off somewhere else to go to somewhere different, the chances are you might miss the turning because your subconscious mind takes over and just drives. You're like, oh, I'm not going to work today. You might even turn up at work and go, oh, can't believe I did this. <laughs> it's normal. It's perfectly normal. So you have this neuro pattern that, and because it's like a whole city, when you learn something new in the book or from some guru or teacher or through your meditation, it's breaking down that whole city. If you've only got a tent or something, that's easy. And that's why you can influence younger people. You can influence children fairly easily. But as, as adults, you cannot. And you cannot even influence yourself because you've got this big city that needs to be broken down before you can rebuild it. You need to break it down or turn it into that nice, fertile field, that blank canvas. And therein lies the problem. So we... So we create something new and the, the ego, the subconscious mind, humours you for a while. It humours you in the respect of, oh, well, let's go for this. You know, you, start, you go to the gym a couple of times or you eat healthy and the subconscious mind's, yeah, I like this. Slept healthier, all good. A week later, nah, let's go back to normal. Let's go back to your comfort zone. Let's go back to, you've had a bad day, let's go back to that takeaway. You know, because we instantly want to feel better. And inner peace is not about feeling better in this moment. It's about feeling better later. You know, you sit in meditation, not for calmness. If you're sitting in meditation for calmness, go and do something else. Go, go, go and have a bath. If you want to feel all, ah, oh, lovely, go and have a bath. Go and get some candles or whatever you're going to do. Go and get some ice cream. But meditation is about learning to bring it back to the present moment. You're training your mind to be able to rewire that habitable response. So when something happens, like when my daughter walks in and says something that for so long I've had a reaction to, so instead of jumping immediately to that reaction, I jump to, ah, wait a minute, let's listen to what she has to say. My old, re my old reaction may not be the best one to take. So because of my meditation, because I'm learning to have a little gap between what arises and how I respond, I might think a little different and go, okay, let's listen. Because I certainly did not make things better that day. She didn't listen to me because I went off on a rampage. You know, she switched off the minute I started. So I didn't gain anything. You know, I can't even remember what it was about now. It, it, if she reminded me, she'd probably, it would probably go, oh my God, that's, that was what it was, was it really? But that's the three parts of your brain, the, the reptilian habitable response keeping you alive. Brilliant part of the brain. It saves us having to think so incredibly quick. The subconscious mind looks through the filing cabinet. That's what we're reprogramming is the filing cabinet having to take out those files and throw them away and the only way of doing that is repetition again and again and again there's only two ways we learn and this is what i'm going to leave you with today there's only two ways you learn and this video is about why is inner peace so hard why is getting out of suffering so difficult and why do we keep falling over well this is why learning you learn in two ways Repetition and emotional impact. 
Repetition again and again and again. Return to the cushion. Return to this present moment. Taking away that concrete city. Taking away the filing cabinet. Again and again and again. You're literally rewiring your brain that you've wired for 30, 40 years. Or emotional impact. Bang. You don't need to be terrified by a bear twice to know a bear might hurt you. Or I always use the emotional impact of the one that nearly everybody can relate to is drinking alcohol when we were younger teens. I went to stay at a friend's, friend of mine and he pulled out, I was only about 14 at a time, pulled a drawer out from underneath the bed and he had all these cans of beer. And he said, well, what do you drink? And I was like, I wasn't really a drinker at 14. And the only one I recognised was Guinness. So I looked, oh, I'm a Guinness drinker, I am. So picked up. <laughs> he gave me a can of Guinness and I drank it. Oh, you know, nothing against Guinness, just I don't like it. And I quickly realised I didn't even like it then. Well, I drank one and he said, oh, do you want another one? I was like, yeah, no problem. Well, I drank two and I felt so ill. All night I was feeling ill and I went to into the toilet several times and I still hope to this day that he doesn't know how ill I was or whether or not he knew I was being sick in the toilet. But now I, I've only got a smell Guinness. I've only got to be near it for me to have all those feelings of that night come straight back. From the feelings to the taste to the smell, everything. So my bit, because my body seen that as an attack, something that hurt me. My mind stored everything. And it reminds me very quickly of all of those things. And this is about, it could be about shadows, could be about why we get triggered and we don't know we're triggered. That's a different video. But just know there's two ways in which you learn and that's emotional impact. And it's very difficult to come out of the suffering and to do more inner peace with emotional impact. Very much more likely that you're meditating or you're reading books or you're practicing to get more inner peace and less suffering. So it's, it's again and again and again. Just keep coming back, coming back. And remembering you're doing okay. You know, if I got some advice for you, one minute in every hour, just sit there and return to your breath. Return to this present moment. And it just slows us down when things arise. It slows us down when things go wrong. It allows us to make wiser, more skillful decisions. So, thank you for watching this. Um, subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss a video. I've launched a new video every Thursday. I'm trying to make a thousand subscribers, so if you can help out with that, that would be awesome and thank you. You can head over to my website, Stephen Webb. There's links below for a free meditation. Take care. Have a great week.